The awards recognized three individuals, Luis Pereira for his studies of the evacuation, Gerald Lopez for promoting Catlin Bay boat culture, and Andrew Brooks for a villa restoration at Library Gardens. Highly commended recipients were Ida and Ruth Greenberg as well as Red Fox Limited for the renovation of 8 to 10 Booth's Passage and the restoration of 1 to 9 Giro's Passage, respectively. Daniel Lanigan also received a commendation for an oral history project but was unable to attend the ceremony. The Ministry for Heritage took the group award for the successful translocation of the Dockyard Gatehouse. It was not easy. It had to be taken, you know, block by block. The roof had to be taken off in, in, one, uh, in one turn. And um, as I say, we were trying to find the best way to do it. But there was no plan initially because it was, you know, practically impossible to, to do. Uh, we achieved it. It is still standing, so that is merit to all the people who participated. Um, and we are now waiting to see what happens with the actual building itself. When the, we had problems with Spain, people were very interested in finding of their identity. So I thought of, um, I approached uh, Bishop Rapallo, who was Monsignor Rapallo, and I said, look, I can investigate and produce family trees and help raise funds for the church. It's a good idea. So this was, you know, in about 27 years ago. And I've done hundreds and hundreds of them. Because people were interested whether they were, they had any relations with Spanish blood. <laughs> Most of them had, anyway, it was a pride. When I started, when I was a small kid in Catalan Bay, small boy, around about the age of nine or ten, um, I always used to watch an old man there, I used to call, he was called Julio Stagno, and my passion was always to start both wooden boat building. And from there, my story started, really, since nowadays I still do it. I'm going to be the last of the, I think, of the wooden boat builders in Catalan Bay. It's a skill that's going to be lost, and it's a real pity. The building's over 100 years old, and one of our planning conditions was to restore and retain the, the original facade on Main Street. Um, we thought that would be a simple job, but it turned out to be rather quite complicated. Um, the relief tiles, are they're no longer made anywhere. We, we, we literally travelled all over. Uh, we, we searched in Italy, in Spain, we went to Morocco. Uh, and thankfully, uh, we managed to track someone down in, in Andalusia. It was a gentleman's grandfather who still had the, his original uh, tools in the back of a shed in a long lost town in the countryside. And he offered to make them for us. And he did a wonderful job, over 1,200 were made by hand. And looking back on 26 years of celebrating heritage on the rock, what's contest been like compared to other years? It's been a, a tough category it's this year. I think there's been quite tough competition, especially in the buildings um, area, which is quite nice for there to be such, so many good quality projects being put forward. It's always difficult for the committee to come to a decision, and I'm sure there are a few disappointed who didn't get the full Heritage Award, but it doesn't take away the merit from the projects um, anyway. I think they all speak for themselves and they really add to our heritage um, atmosphere. Heritage Trust Chairman Ian Balestrino also showed thanks to the government for increasing the trust's involvement over the years with a special award for John Cortés.